Hi you guys, it's Shira Star Goddess. Okay, so um, Sancista Brujo Luis is about to call me and we're about to do this and talk about some things. Uh, I'm gonna ask him some questions and we're just gonna chit chat and see what happens. I don't have anything written down um, to ask him. So we're just basically gonna talk. Um, <laughs> so I'm just waiting on his call right now. Um, hello, hello, good morning. Hello. Hi. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> good, good. Good to hear from you. Yeah, you too. Okay, so I have the camera rolling. So we're already okay. started. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, so you had your three cups of coffee yet? I'm on my third one right now. <laughs> okay, I got. I have my second one because I don't drink three. If I drank three, I'd, I'd, my house would be clean. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself. I'm sure everybody knows about you already because i talked about you so many times. But you can introduce okay. yourself. Okay, so my name is Sassi Saburgo Luis. I am a fellow YouTuber, a spiritualist. I also practice uh, Hispanic Brujeria. And I am initiated into Puerto Rican Sanse, a baptized into Puerto Rican Sanse, and uh, Dominican 21 Division. I also read, uh, I do spiritual consultations, uh, tarot cards, I read palmistry, and I am a spiritual medium. Wow, you do a lot. <laughs> I do a lot, yes. But that's good though. Okay, so I purchased your book. Yes, remember I purchased your book. It's uh, Light in Progress or Luz y Progreso. And it's, it's the handbook for the developing mediums within the Puerto Rican Espiritismo. Um, so I was reading through your book. It's very well written. There's there's photos in here. Oh my gosh. Um, and as you know, like my father is Puerto Rican and I was, you know, my, my mom and dad divorced when I was little. So I never got that side of my culture. So when I saw your channel, I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, this is awesome. You, you know, someone's teaching this because it's, you know, it's not that many people on YouTube teaching what you teach, you know? Exactly. So I was like automatically felt really, really connected and loved your channel. Um, so I noticed like you show a lot of your altars in your book. Are these all your altars? No, actually, those are other mediums. Others, uh, I got some altars there, but in my book, uh, those are other uh, spiritista, Puerto Rican spiritistas that participated. Uh, you know that I let them know that I was writing a book. One of the altars is uh, Emily Mo. She also has a YouTube page. Uh, she's a professional Puerto Rican uh, tarot reader, and she's a spiritist as well. So. Uh, she asked, I asked her, can I, you know, show one of your altars? And she said, yeah. So she took a picture, she sent it. But yeah, there are pictures of mine. Uh, I think my godchildren's, who else? And my godchildren and a, a couple of friends who are also Puerto Rican espiritistas. Okay. So, um, you work with a lot of the saints, right? I honor a lot of the saints. Um, I honor a lot of the saints like, uh, well, the ones that are part of my spiritual quadrant. Spiritual quadrant is we have these certain saints that are, are assigned to you by the all creator God uh, to protect you, to guide you, to lead you through the trials and tribulations of life. So I do venerate certain saints and then I have, I don't know how to say the word in English, hereditary saints. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather was a devotee of San Martin de Porres uh, so I have his statue, you know, and I use that statue not to represent my, my grandfather, but to represent my grandfather, the link between my grandfather, because my grandfather venerated San Martin de Porres. I also have Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is not really in my spiritual quadrant. I've always loved Santa Barbara, but my aunt uh, venerated her in mm -hmm. life. And so that's my connection with my, my dear. You know, because mm -hmm. she was a devotee of Santa Barbara. Okay. I just I just bought um, a San Martin prayer card. I, I don't know. I was drawn to him for some reason. 
Um, yes. But I wanted to, I'm going to learn more about him because I'm, you know, I'm still on my journey as well as learning about saints and things like that. And I've started working with a few. But um, what is the one saint that you just have to be, you know, have to honor all the time? Just like, I don't want to say favorite, but which one is like, you know, the go to for you? Well, we all have a head uh, saint, uh, a guardian. It's kind of like a guardian angel type mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Everyone does. Uh, some people call it guardian angel. Some people call it call it a patriotic saint, matriarch saint. That is the one that is the head honcho, the, the chief of everything that I do. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and for me, it's uh, La Caridad del Cobre, a lady of charity. Uh, she's the biggest statue. She's the most elaborate. Uh, she's, and then after her, there's the second. It's like, a, it's like your president and then your vice president. Mm -hmm. Second to her is St. Nazareth. I, I always go to see Nazareth. Uh, when I was very, when I was young, I was I was a bleeder. I used to bleed a lot, um, and I, I was supposed to be completely blind uh, by five, six years old. Uh, but you know, one, uh, my mother took me to a curandera in Puerto Rico, and she gave uh, my mother a medallion to San Lazaro, and she said to my mother that this Santo, this saint, uh, walks with me, will protect me. Mm -hmm. So he's my second in chief. You know what I'm saying? He's like, like she's like a lady of charity. She's like my mother, and Saint Lazarus is like my father. Oh, okay. So I know a, they use a lot of the saints as covers in voodoo for certain, you know, um, Lao or Orisha. So which one would would she be in voodoo? Well, in Voodoo, they call her La Siren, which is a, a, a path of Yemanja or, or Yemaya. But in Sanse, or well, in Sanse, she is a path of an Indian water divinity, a, a spirit that the, the native Tainos before Christopher Columbus, uh, you know, before the Europeans came to the Caribbean, the, the Tainos venerated uh, what they call the Semi spirits, the gods. Mm -hmm. And so she is Cuatrisque. Okay, and I call her Cachita Tumbo, which means uh, the princess that tumbles down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so that's what she represents to me. She represents a Native American Taino uh, divinity. Okay. Yeah. So I think mo a lot of different cultures um, work with that. I would I would just call that energy. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. Yamaya. Um, you know, and then the Lady of Charity, and then the. Um, the Taino version, as you spoke about. So, um, do you feel like she's more of an energy? She is an uh, she's an energy of what represents the, the waters. You know, what I'm saying okay. the sweet waters of life and creation. She's a path. You know, the, the the spirits they have different faces depending on what part of the world you are. So, let's say if you are in Africa, you will see her as Ochun. Mm -hmm. Okay, we call them different paths. Okay, different avatars. In the Caribbean, she would be Guatrisk. In, in Asia, she would have a different name. Not saying that these are the same spirits. I'm saying these are different avatars or different paths to a similar energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how I see her, yeah. Okay. Well, I, just, I wanted to ask you that because there's a lot of people that will go back and forth on, you know, things like that. Well, this is just really this person. They just, you know, change the face on it. But... Like you said, they're similar energies, not the same one, right? They're similar energies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many cultures believe that there's there's many spirits. If you go to the woods, every tree has its spirit. Then there's this one big tree. He's the king, mm -hmm. or she's the queen of that forest. You know what I'm saying? That's the chief of that energy. You go to any river, any lake. Okay, there's 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 their spirit that rules that certain area. But then there's that big like the queen type spirit, I guess you want to say. Mm -hmm. So these would be like maidens, you know what I'm saying? Like handmaidens to that energy. Right. Okay, yeah. I, I get it now. I get it. Um, okay, so when did you first start doing what you're doing professionally? Oh my goodness, I've been a medium since I was very, since I was born. Um, I always saw the spirit. I always had my imaginary friends. I'm part of my, my family. Are espiritistas. On uh, my mother's side, they're espiritistas, and on my father's side, they're more brujos. Mm -hmm. they, they practice more the magical. They're two different things. Uh, but, you know, being part, uh, my mother's side, who had the espiritismo, and then my father's side, who were more the brujo, they, they practice more the, the traditional. 
traditional Hispanic witchcraft. I've always been in this. This has always been part of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, everything. I remember when I was losing my hair, a teenager, my mother, she made, a, she got some rum and made a concoction to make me not lose my hair. It didn't work. <laughs> but, you know, it's just part of what they did. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, um, so when did you come in to start, you know, helping people professionally? Like, when did you say, okay, this is my calling. I'm going to do this professionally. And, you know, when was your I start? Was, I was, all brujos and all activities that we have to go through trials and tribulations. Okay. And my godfather, who initiated me into San, said, he said, he said to me a good lesson that he said to me, you could be a good medium at 20. You could be a good medium at, at, at 15. But you really shouldn't work the public or work the public until you reach a certain age and development. And he believed that that age should be 30 and up. So I have always been spiritual. I have, you know, dabbled in various different religions, but I did not come to work spiritually for other people until my 30s. Uh, I've always did it in my house. I, I did, you know, certain little things in my house. But for the public, you know, I mm-hmm. started doing that at 30. You have to go through trials and tribulations in life. You have to go through ordeals, let's call it ordeals. And these are initiations that, you know, that you're, you're placed into this earth to surpass and overcome. Right. When you overcome all these ordeals, you're better able to help uh, others. I totally agree. You know? I totally agree because I started all of my YouTube channels and I started uh, doing what I do professionally as well after the age of 30. I think I was about 33 or 34. Exactly. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people say, well, how come you know so much and why come, how come you're so wise and da-da-da-da? And I'm like, because I have experience and I watch other people and I learn from their mistakes. I learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I see exactly. what happens if you do A, B, C, and D, you know. And, you know, what do you say to those people who jump right into it and just start saying, oh, I'm a medium or I'm a reader, and they just kind of learn things like maybe six months ago. What do you What do you have to say to them? Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, this is a lifelong process. Um, a really good medium, you know, doesn't really go out and say I'm a medium, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't go knocking doors and, not, and say I'm a medium, I, you know, I can be spiritual. We don't do that. This is a lifelong process of development. And the greatest mediums that I know are older. They are 60 and up uh, because they have they have worked the spirit, you know, 60 some, somewhat years. Um, but as old as you get, you're developing more your spiritual faculties, your spiritual gifts. Um, people that are starting off young, uh, it's good. You know, there's one thing that I disagree and I agree. Uh, we, we all seek knowledge. We all want to learn new things, which is which is fine. There's a lot of books out there that you can buy in any bookstore, but the problem is, it's like going to college. You buy a, a, a college book, and there's no professor for you to talk to. So a lot of these people that are doing these things, they're buying these books, these 101 witchcraft or 101 mediumship, uh, and not learning from someone who's been through that. You need an elder, uh, someone either from your family, someone that you can uh, that, that, that can help you uh, develop your, your 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 gifts. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why you see a lot of, uh, and I know I don't mean to throw shade, but that's why you see a lot of, you know, people who practice uh, modern day witchcraft. They're very depressed because uh, they're, they're dabbling with spirits that they don't even know. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, brujeria, witchcraft is not a game. We do not call it a game. You are you are on. You're working with cosmic energies that you have no control. Not you, but you know, the person. And at any moment, if you don't know how to harness the energy of fire, that can burn you. You see what I'm saying? So you have to have someone who's older, who who's been through that, to lead you. Right. I feel but like. Yes, uh, I, I, yes, and I, I totally agree with that. I feel like older people are more emotionally balanced and very grounded, so they don't fly, you know, they don't do things out of, um, you know, haste and emotion. They kind of think things through, okay, what is going to be the result of this if I do this? They kind of wait around and say, okay, do I, do I still want to do this? Young people or younger people are, you know, a little bit more led by their emotions so they jump to do things okay I want to work with this energy I don't care you know I just want to get this done so you know I'm very desperate because I'm emotional 
So I figure, you know, I think older people are more in control of, uh, or more logical than emotional. So that's that's also one thing in spirituality that I think uh, needs to be addressed. Like a lot of people will use too much emotion on, you know, making decisions spiritually. And that's, you know, that's kind of what a lot of young people would do. So I think the wiser, the older, the wiser. Um, and a lot of people say, well, wisdom doesn't come with age. But a lot of things do come with age, like logic and patience and, you know, um, grounding. So, of course, you can learn things, but wisdom is basically knowledge applied, you know? Yeah, knowledge that you've acquired through experience, through uh, going through these things. You right. see what I'm saying? Through going through uh, trials, ordeals, and, and trial and error. Right. And these things are based on thousands and thousands, I mean, since the beginning of shamanism, from trial and error. Yes, you will get that one medium and you will get that one witch that is born with that gift. That they, they just, But they don't even know where that energy comes from. So even they need uh, the elder to guide them. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. Yes. So um, what, do you, what do you say to someone who doesn't have an elder or a mentor who wants to, you know, learn spiritually? Do you think they should, do you think YouTube is a good place to find wisdom from I'm other sorry, people? What, what do you, what would you say to someone who is looking for someone to teach them, um, like an elder, because they don't have any experience or anyone in their family? Would you think YouTube is a good place to find, you know, elderly advice? You know, yeah, YouTube could be good, and then it could be dangerous at the same time. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, uh, they go into spirituality or magic because they, they feel not connected to the rest of the world. And then they often gravitate to a person who's at the same level of them at that moment. So so let's say that that teenager is depressed. They're often not realizing, they often find a, a teacher who's depressed or, or will lead them into the wrong path. My godfather, one thing though, one, my godfather told me that even the worst teacher is your greatest teacher. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so they can be a good teacher, you know, but a lot of people don't learn that. Uh, you know, I've had my bad teachers, but, you know, they taught me the greatest lessons that I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be, I don't want to steal from people. I don't want to take what is not mine. And so I've learned that from elders who weren't in it really for spirituality, more for, so for comments, I, want, I guess I want to say. Right. But, you know, when the time comes, the teacher will come. Right. One thing is that you're, you can't rely on your, your teacher for everything. They will teach you the basics. They will teach you to understand who you are as a human being. Inside you are all the spirits. Every spirit that you honor, that you, you work with, it's inside of you. They are your greatest teachers. You know what I'm saying? Right. An elder just helps you unlock that door that's closed. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and then once they try to help you open it, it is your task to develop your relationship with your spirits. Right. And you know, okay, so you say spirits are all inside of us and they're, you know, everywhere as well. It kind of reminds me of what I talk about, like dark energy, dark matter, uh, consciousness. You know, um, everything is connected and every, as, as above, so below, as within, so without. Exactly. So it's kind of the same principle. So if you're more attracted to working with spirits and saints, you know, um, I feel like, you know, even though we, we don't need them, um, you know, we can just use our, you know, um, ourselves it's best to also have backup you know what I mean like exactly uh, like a team a spiritual team you know protection and all that things it's kind of almost like you know yeah you can make it on your own but if you had help you could make it faster bigger and better do you know well the thing is that your spiritual quadrant is like your immune system if you have a weak immune system you're gonna get you get sick easily Mm -hmm. If you have a strong immune system, which is having a stronger connection with your spirits, you're going to have a stronger uh, spiritual um, immune system. Uh, people work with them, people don't. People actually think they don't work with their spirits, but they do. I mean, just by going into nature and you're respecting the earth, you're working with the energy of the earth. You see what I'm saying? Yes. When you're pouring water on those flowers, you know, 
know, that could be something very spiritual. You don't think it is because you think you have to bow down in a, in a temple and pray. No, what you do is you're, you're watering the earth, you're giving life to the, to the plant. So you're doing something spiritual. Right. You know, and you are working with the spirit. You just, a lot of people just don't realize it. Right. They don't acknowledge it or they don't really, um, you know, they don't look too deep into it. You know, it's more surface level. Exactly. Matter. And I feel spirit like... Is, oh, the go spirit ahead. is everywhere. The spirit is everywhere. They, they, it's in everything from the flower to the tree to the stone. And when you're working with a stone, there's an energy. There's a spirit in that stone. Mm -hmm. That stone is not lifeless. There's that energy. We call it ache. Uh, that energy of God, bondier, whatever, and, you know, God. That, that spark of energy that's within it, that spirit. So whether you know it or not, you are working with a, a spirit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, that's that's so true because if you watch children, like, children are very um, spiritually connected. If you just watch children, they'll start talking to something, you know. They'll be like, hi, Rock. Hi, Mr. Rock, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they recognize that, and it's very powerful, you know. And you'll think they're silly, but they recognize an energy in that rock to speak to it, you know. Well, the thing is that we... We were we had a life before we were born. Do you see what I'm saying? And I do believe that we've had many lives. So when you make the passage uh, through the womb, as you will make that passage you know, when, you, when you pass away, when you pass this this existence, you are bringing a little bit of your knowledge from your past life. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Many children uh, are actually children are the greatest mediums. Uh, they can see the spirits. They can speak with the spirits. Sadly, today in modern in society, we try to, well, we've always tried to wash that away, but look at a child, that they, they see the spirit in, in everything, you mm -hmm. know, and then we corrupt them, you know what I'm saying, as parents, as teachers, as, as friends, we corrupt that spirituality, uh, but there are those certain children that have that so strong that they can't get corrupted, and you'll see that in them because they, they tend to be loners, they tend to uh, spend a lot of time by themselves. They, they, you know, they're always by themselves, they enjoy the company of themselves, um, and they see life and spirit in everything. Right. That's, yeah, but children, all, all children have that gift. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, and I, I try not to corrupt or make the mistake of doing that to my kids. I let them have total freedom, and I encourage them, you know. Exactly. Um, and, I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll even go along with it, you know. And it's sad that, you know, we'd say, oh, that's silly, that rock is not alive, or oh, that's silly, stop talking to that, you know. I feel like, you know, if my parents or if my mom hadn't told me certain things, I would be, you know, much more developed uh, right. in my psychic abilities. And, you know, you can get them back if you work on them and, and things like that. But I feel like, you know, we shouldn't do that to kids. We, and I also feel like we should give them a choice, you know, of what they want to believe and what they want to practice. Exactly. Because I didn't get that choice. And, you know, some people don't get that choice. Um, but I feel like if you had a choice, you're very open minded. You can embrace all or just one path and you'll see truth in a lot of things. You won't just be, you know, um, stuck in one area. You, you'll you be able to move around and see things from different points of views. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you see, my parents, they came from Puerto Rico. And like I said, my mother's side was Piripimo. My father's side was Brujo. When they came to the United States, they wanted to live the American life and and so they, they still they were still part of the Catholic Church and they would take us to the Catholic Church every Sunday. But my mother saw that I had the gift very young and they never and plus her mother was a medium, so they never tried to shun that away from me. Actually they would send me to Puerto Rico every summer, you know, so I can develop with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's nice. <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't have anything like that when I was growing up. Um, so I kind of learned on my own. And then I found out later that I do have, you know, uh, on my Puerto Rican side, I do. My dad said that his mom practiced brujaria and, um, you know, all, you know, in Puerto Rico. And he, you know, I, I guess he kind of reminded you remind me of him a little bit, which is why I liked your channel. <laughs> Um, well, the thing is that you you think you practice alone, but in actuality, you know, 
your, my grandmother, she passed away physically. Spiritually, she's there with me. Mm -hmm. And every day, well, not every day, but there's days that I feel her energy. Uh, there's days where I hear a whisper in my ear and I get this insight of something that I didn't know. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whether you see them or not, the, your, even your ancestors, they, they do lead you. You just have to be open enough to hear them and listen to them. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? So you think you were alone, but if, 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 you, if you come from a, a family of brujos or espiritistas, then trust and believe. Trust and believe I... me when I say this to you. You have spirits who are brujos, who are espiritistas, whoever, who are part of your cuadro espiritual, who lead you. Yes, you can't I, physically feel them or sense them. You can't physically see them, but you can sense them. You can kind of hear them in the wind. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I dreamed about some of them, uh, one of them in particular, but I didn't connect the dots. I was, you know, I kept dreaming of this lady. And, you know, she was, um, you know, of either, like, you know, native descent or something like that. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't connect the dots. So now, you know, I, I could I connected it later on, but at that time I was just like, Oh, I have a native um spiritual guide or a spirit, you know, because I keep dreaming of her and blah 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 blah. But I never connected the dots. I'm like, Okay, well that's in my bloodline and I didn't even connect the dots because I was separated, you know, um by divorce and things like that. So I was just that part totally was not in my mind at the time, but that's so true. And that's the thing that people forget, the, the key word is guide. Mm -hmm. Spirit guide, they guide you. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Um, I saw a picture of your father, and I heard the interview, and I see his native, I see his African side, mm -hmm. and I also see his Taino side. Uh, so inside your DNA, you know, is, you have Taino roots, you have your African roots, I'm sure you have your Caucasian roots. These are all spirits that are part of who you are. You might have a spirit in your quadrant that is completely European and that attracts you to your European, I don't know, whatever it may be, like your Celtic side. You might have even an, an, an ancient Indian spirit, you don't know, Indian from India, that attracts you to your Hindu. Why am I attracted to Hinduism? What is it, what is it about me lighting a candle to Ganesh? I don't, I'm not Indian. <laughs> because you have a spirit guide somewhere down your DNA in your cell, there is that blood. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that spirit leads you to that. Yes, I totally believe that because, um, you know, I think, like you said, the past lives, I've dreamt of past lives and some of them were in different places around the world. So that's, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, we do. We do have many uh, carnations and what we have to do in each uh, in each life is to try to elevate, to try to learn, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't, the spirit generally doesn't want to return. You know what I'm saying? We must return as, it's like a school. You start from first grade and you, and you graduate uh, college. Life, every time you, you come back to life, it's because you have to learn something or you have to go through an experience that you did not go through in your past life. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're in this life, you have to learn from that. A lot of people don't, you know what I'm saying? But you should try to learn from that experience so that when you return into a future life, if you do return, you've already uh, passed that. Okay. Some people do return and some people, their spirits just have learned everything they need to learn and they just become an elevated spirit. Yes. Okay, so what do you say about, okay, there's a lot of people and I think, I don't know if you follow Abraham Hicks, um, but she says that, you know, people who are born and they suffer on earth, that is, you know, what they chose to do. So, like, yes, starving... there's a lesson that they well, there's a lesson that they need to learn through that suffering. Mm -hmm. One, two, um, sometimes it could be karmic. You know, there is karma there, in every ancient text. There's the saying, "The sins of the fathers, so shall the children pay." But in actuality, the saying really means is that was your sin in your past life. Now you have to come back and and, and pay for that. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, there is starvation, there is hunger. Everything that 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 is suffering in this world is because of us. Because right. there's enough food in the world to feed everybody. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? There there's is. enough trees in this planet to shelter everybody. There's no need for suffering. There's, we suffer internally because of illnesses and all that, but hunger, there's no reason for hunger. Do you know how much food we throw away? Yes. In this country alone? Do you see what I'm saying? That could feed 
nations. So why do you think no one does anything? Do you think, okay, the human race is apparently good, but they're also very selfish. So what do you think about that? I'm sorry, what was the question? I said, why do you think there's still world, like, world hunger? If, because if humanity is apparently good for the most part, why do they let people starve? Is it because of their selfishness? Humanity, we're all born good. We're not born evil. We're not born wicked. But we become influenced by life. You know, because you think, oh, the more gold I have, the more power I have. Actually, Ali, you don't. But, you know, then you just lose... Uh, that sense of helping the, the less. You think that those who are below you, well, are below you, you see what I'm saying? Right. So you lose that sense about you because you don't see it. You don't see it on a daily basis. Right. You, you hide yourself. Just like the Buddha, I forgot his real name, but the Buddha, his parents, they hid him in a temple. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then when he walked out of that temple in his, in his, I think he was seven years old, eight years old, he saw suffering, he saw hunger, he saw, and that's what made him, you know, become the Buddha. Uh, and a lot of these rich people, they shelter themselves from the pain. They see it on TV and they, they can quickly turn it off. Right, that's true. So, do you think that that's something that we should fix or something that just is a necessary part? We of need to fix, uh, but we're not heading towards fixing that. We're heading uh, towards self-destruction. Uh, we're heading towards uh, annihilating, annihilating ourselves as a human species. Uh, we're destroying the earth, the greatest spirit that you know God has given us, Mother Earth. We abuse her. I mean, right. look at what they're doing at uh, the rainforest. They're, they're destroying rainforests. They're killing animals. We, I'm not saying they, I should say we as a human species. We're killing uh, our, our, the animals. You know, we're destroying forests. So as a human race, we are heading towards, the earth will survive, you know, the earth will replenish herself. Mm -hmm. She has done it for billions and billions of years, but as a species, we are heading towards self-destruction. We're heading towards self-destruction. Look at the children today. They don't go out and play. They're in the computers. You see them on the phone all day. You see them, they don't get no exercise. They eat McDonald's, you know, five times a week. So we're heading towards uh, destroying ourselves as a species. That's true, and you know, many people have written that you know we have the human or a human-like race has lived before on the planet and destroyed themselves, and now we are you know here and we're headed towards the same uh, you know end, and then after us there'll be others. So I feel like it's the school and it's our time and what it doesn't matter if we're destroying ourselves or not it's the lessons that we're learning that's very important so that our spirit can evolve you know what i'm exactly. saying because if we choose to come into the world as it gets worse and worse obviously the lessons and the spiritual knowledge that we're gaining is going to be more powerful and important at this time you know because it's a lot exactly. of exactly you know things that and we have to get any over. ancient text on any, any ancient religion they all speak about that apocalypse mm -hmm. you know they give a, a little image about that apocalypse whether whatever religion you choose a lot of these uh, spiritualities do speak about that that end of time doesn't necessarily mean the end of time as time or the ending of the earth the earth will replenish itself it's the ending of a human the species of us you see what I'm saying right. and that's what we're heading towards right um, so I want to ask you, do you astral travel? Do you go to, do you feel like other dimensions exist and have you been to any of those? Do I, I, I didn't get the last part, I'm sorry. Do you astral travel and have you d seen other dimensions in your astral travels? Yes, actually before I go to sleep I always pray. I like to pray every night and then I, I visualize, the only way I can sleep, I get a sound sleep is to uh, do, you know, the astral travel. Uh, and usually I just see myself floating, my, my peri-spirit, my spirit floating away from my body mm -hmm. and traveling. Then I have this astral altar, which, which is within inside me. Mm -hmm. uh, and there I have a seed. And, you know, it's, it's a scenario that I've created you know, during my life. And then from there, I just wander off into the sleep. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But yes, I have astral traveled. I, that, the worst place I've asked. Um, I have al ever astral traveled was to the nothingness uh, and I've done that so many times it's the most scariest place in the world because it's, it's, it's void of, of life it's darkness and you feel completely alone you don't, you don't even feel the presence of God uh, and I've gone to this place a few times and I remember thinking when I'm there the fear, the loneliness and 
then I just suck myself back into my body that I jump. You know, I wake up because I jump. You know, I've been there too, and that's crazy that you say that. And I felt that there was nothing there either, but... Do nothing, you, nothing. Do you ever nothing. think... There's no life. Okay, you said that you don't even feel God there. Do you feel like you you could be the God of that nothingness? Like, could you start creating in your mind to create something in that nothingness? Um, well, I've never, I've never done that because the only emotion I've ever felt at that point was just like loneliness. Right. Uh, uh, my my, my but, lonely. I feel low. But I think feel about. Comfortable. I don't feel correct. I don't feel right there. But think about the the beginning of the Bible. How it says, "In the beginning, there was darkness." Exactly. And yeah, you then, can't have. Yeah, you can't have life. You can't have light without darkness. You right. And you have to create. It's impossible. Yes, yeah. exactly. And the God, the God made uh, Adam and Eve because he was what lonely. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a, I think that this is a place that we travel as spiritual people to see. As we were speaking about the annihilation of a human race, we travel that as a spiritual person to see where we're heading. And as spiritual people, we should do something about it now instead of saying, you know how we people every day. Oh, I need to lose weight. I'll start my diet tomorrow. Or I'll start my diet. No, start it now. You know what I'm saying? Let's make the change now. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you can't change a whole nation. Start with one person. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that one person will teach two people. And that two people will teach three, and it will go on and on and on. You'll create a ripple effect. Right. You see what I'm saying? Well, I believe we're we're still headed towards, you know, annihilation, uh-huh. but there it can be slowed down. Um, you no, know, definitely, definitely solar energy that. you know they have cars that run off water but the oil industry won't release them because they make too much money off of oil you know that's they, exactly exactly what we were talking about it's all about power it's right. all about money it's all about material gain do you remember that huge uh, earthquake in Japan uh, a couple years ago and it yes. had a tsunami well um, this company in Japan was getting ready to release the water car and all of a sudden earthquake comes like um, a week before they were to release it and wiped out all the auto industry um, on you know on the island and I feel like that was connected <laughs> well yeah I mean the spirits of earth are, are the spirits in nature they're tired of the abuse that humans have on the earth I mean I mean, how hard is it to take a piece of paper and throw it into a garbage? People just throw it on the ground, you know? Right. And every, there's five billion people on this earth. Imagine each one of us doing that to the earth right. every day. You don't think that the energy of, of Gaia, of, of Madre Tierra gets, gets tired of this abuse? I think, I, I don't, I think that she does. And I also feel like uh, as you know, humans also have a little bit of control over, you know, earthquakes and weather now through science. So right, that right. could make it even worse. Like um, some people say, oh, some things are man-made and then some things are really nature-based. So it's kind of hard to tell which one is which, but I feel like, you know, um, some people can tell, but I feel like that that thing that happened in Japan was done on purpose to keep the water car from being released. You know, it's kind of like a warning. Right, like, right. I'll, you know, um, they have that heart machine and all that. But not to get into conspiracy. But, um, you know, uh, a lot of people feel like they don't want the earth to get better. They just want, you know, to, to keep their status and make a lot of money and be greedy. And then, you know, when it's our time, it, it's done, it's done, you know. Exactly. Well, you've always had, uh, like, an ancient, even in, in books, you always have that the good, the good and the bad. And you always have the wizard, Gandalf, who who tries to help the community and then you have the sorcerer uh, Saruman who only wants power more power he don't care of the destruction of the world what he cares for is power you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying and this mentality exists in every religion in every mythology of ancient culture it exists you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. this is nothing new how can you, you know, get a, a group of people not to want power I'm sorry I said, how can you get a group of people to change the world and not want power? Yeah, that's, that, that, that is hard. Uh, they get blindsided by getting more, you know, by, by living in the moment and not thinking about the tomorrow. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not just for their future generations, but for their soul. Uh, so they're just thinking about the, 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 
really short 70, 80 years that we're here, they're just, that's what they're thinking about at that moment. It's like if you go to college, if you go to high school, you know, you look at these high school popular kids, they're only thinking of the moment, the popular at the moment, they're not thinking about tomorrow. You know? Do you think and they're that not thinking people... about the suffering that they, they cause on the, the ones who are not popular. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that movie Tomorrowland? No, I don't think I have. Okay, it's about this machine that's created and you can see into the future. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like if people could glimpse into the future of what the world would be like if things didn't change, that it would shift that uh, you know need for power into a need to survive. Because you know, exactly. when people are in survival mode, they're doing what's best for the survival of them and their families and things like that. And uh, their race, exactly. Yeah. So, and and when you're in power mode, you're doing more for self. And, you know, exactly. at the moment. So I feel like if we could all have a glimpse into the future, like if more media would start saying this is what the earth is going to be like in 10 years if we stay on our path, even though it might not be true, <laughs> it would help people get a, a different consciousness, you know. I mean, they use the media to, um, you know, program us in other ways. So why not program, you know, a positive message, even if it's not 100% true? Exactly. It can change, you know, the mentality and, you know, the consciousness of people. Well, the thing is that positive messages don't sell. Right. But if it's negative, see, it's negative. They're going to say, okay, in 10 years, if we don't stop doing this, this and that, we're not going to yeah. have any more East Coast, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody on the East Coast is going to be doing their part, right? Exactly. So it's scary and it's negative, so therefore it might work. Mm hmm. Exactly. <laughs> you said, mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know, I do, I do agree. But, you know, that's a, that's a power that's beyond me as a spiritual leader. Well, or not a leader, I don't like to use the word leader, uh, but as a spiritual teacher, and as a spiritual advisor, there are things that I have no power of. You yeah, see what I'm saying? And right. that, I mean, I, like I said, I could, I could try to change one person's mind, one per person's perspective, and then I hope that that person will change too. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It starts with planting one seed, and that one seed will create more plants, you know? Right. right. And um, I feel like if everyone had, you know, what they needed in life, there would be less greed. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's, there's too, there, the gap is too much between poverty and, you know, middle class and, you know, wealthy. I feel like if everyone just had what they needed, there would be less uh, struggle and less, you know, greed. Exactly. Well, yeah. that's true. But that's been, you know, something from uh, the beginning. I mean, like, again, you go to every mythology and every culture, uh, Adam and Eve, they had, you know, they, okay, Adam and Eve, the apple, more power. They, they bit the apple, Cain and Abel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was more power, you know? Right. It, 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 and it's not just like that in the Bible, it's in every, if you look at all ancient religions, their mythologies, their stories, their folklores. But if you look at it the also, plays. you needed that power to grow as well, but then you took it too mm -hmm. far, right? That power was needed to expand, you know, your mind right. and everything else, but then it, it, it's like fire, you know, you needed it to cook and to warm up and, you know, to have exactly. this, and then now it's a nuclear weapon, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course. So, well... Let's change the subject because <laughs> that's depressing. Um, so what do you, okay, so a lot of witches and people who practice magic, you know, um, how, how do they give back to the community if they want to give back? You know, because I know a lot of religions, they tie and donate to charities and things like that, um, you know, do missionary trips and things like that. So what can uh, the pagan community, witchy community, spiritual community do in order to give back, what do you think is a good idea? Well, uh, you know, well, what everyone else does as a good human being, whether it's a witch or not, I think, like you said, we should give to the community. We should try to change the earth around us. And as um, witches, I guess you want to call witches, they should try to organize things uh, to give to those who are less fortunate. You see what I'm saying? Um, but a lot of the witchy community, I hate using the word witchy, but a lot of the witch communities, they, you know, they're not thinking that way. Right. You see what I'm saying? Um, I feel like they, they feel like they're going to be picked on by other, you know, religions if they, you know, do something big like that. Oh, exactly. 
exactly, yeah. Well, the thing is that, you know, no matter what, you're going to get picked on. Uh, you know, whatever religion or spirituality you pick or choose, you're going to get picked on by somebody. Yeah, because uh, I'm so not... you can't let that deteriorate who you are as a human being. What you believe in is what you believe in. It's yours. And if you believe it in your heart to be 100% true in your heart, then you will fight for what you believe in. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I will fight that tooth and nail. I'm, I'm really a humble person, and I'm, I'm very a sweet, you know, I think I'm an easy to get along person, but if anyone tries to disrespect what I believe in, that's something that you're crossing a, uh, a barrier that you shouldn't, you know what I'm Because it will release my inner Hulk, <laughs> you know, but as a, as a, you know, which is, I think they should give more to the earth and not just to the earth, but to teach uh, their students to do the same. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know you live in Massachusetts. Um, so I always see videos, you know, with people in Salem and then there's these like corner preachers uh, with a microphone saying people are going to hell and stuff like that, <laughs> like on Halloween. Right. What do you think about right. those people? Well, you know, that, that's their belief and they're fighting. I, whether I agree or disagree, that is their belief. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they believe it with all their heart. Who am I to disrespect what somebody else believes? Even though, as long as they don't come to my door and disrespect what I believe, mm -hmm. then you can say what you want out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, you, you have, you as a human being, have the choice to sit there and listen or just to walk away. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? And when I go to Salem, usually at Halloween, I hear them and I just, I just, I listen to them and I walk away. You know, <laughs> right. I, it is, that's their belief. Right. I've seen they do, uh, they do that, not just for the witches, they do that for the gay pride. They do that for, you know, pretty much everything. But that's their belief, you know. Have and, you had someone come on your YouTube channel and troll um, like oh that? yes, a lot of people do, and what they want to get from me is a reaction, and I don't give it to them. Uh, I don't give a reaction if I can't sit with you face to face. Right. Do okay. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit online and give anybody that power over me. I see a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of these witches that they're they're constantly bickering because behind the scenes there's people manipulating them. So mm -hmm. they're being easily manipulated right. by other people who want to see a witch war. <laughs> now, I don't get manipulated very easily by right. other people. I analyze everything, you see what I'm saying? And when someone says something that's disrespectful, no, that's, that's amen. You can call me whatever you want, mm -hmm. you can say whatever you want about me, you can call me this, you can call me that. that that's online. But the moment you cross that threshold, knock on my door and do the same thing, it's on and popping. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm a man. You right. know? <laughs> I'm a man. So right. I have to take care of myself. But online, I'm not going to waste my time on that. There's too many important things in the world to really worry about. Mm -hmm. True. And also, I feel like, you know, when you do your craft and, you know, I, I won't say witchy, but like um, when, when we do our craft, there's not a lot of public places that are comfortable and things like that for, you know, people who practice magic. I feel like someone or, you know, us as a community or people should, you know, have an area where that's okay. And, you know, that's what co people come there to do. And, you know, uh, and you're not just, you know, sneaking around like cemeteries and, you know. <laughs> right, right. This is well, where you can go bury I'm your spell to, work. This which is, is where funny that you say that because I'm going to a Beltane festival and I'm not a Wiccan, but I, I respect Wiccans. I'm a blue wolf. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily believe witchcraft to be a religion. That's just me. That's, that's the way I was raised. That's the way I was taught. But there are Wiccans and they do their Beltane festivals and they're neo-pagans and they do... And I, I enjoy these things. I enjoy... I can feel comfortable in a Beltane festival as I would in a Catholic church as I would in a Hindu temple mm -hmm. because I see God and spirit in everything. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but that's where they do these things. They, they, they go and they celebrate the Beltane or the summer solstice in nature. Right. You know what I'm saying? And to me that's very beautiful because you're expressing your love for the earth and, and its creation. Right. I know because I'm in Texas and we have a lot of land down here. So I know a lot of uh, pagans and witches who own ranches or rent out ranches to have mm -hmm. their uh, Halloween or science uh, or uh, Beltane or, you know, all those holidays that, you know, pagans celebrate. They will say, OK, well, meet us at such and such ranch. You know, it's private and all those things like that. I think there should be more of those places that are 
open year round, you know, where you can go and practice freely, you know, do your thing, visit other people. It should be something like that out there. And I, I feel like someone, um, you know, oh, that's probably going to be in the future. But I feel like instead of hiding all the time and worrying about pe what people are thinking, you know, sneaking around cemeteries, <laughs> you know, right, exactly. I, I feel like it's, it should, it's something that should be done um, year round. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the thing is that in Puerto Rico, I was raised in Espiritismo, and we would have our spiritual, my grandmother has her spiritual temple, and that's where all the mediums would gather. See, they don't and have that here. I'm sorry? I said they don't really have anything like that here. Yeah, sadly to say it's a dying breed. Uh, and it, it's not just in Espiritismo, it's in all cultures that practice some form of spiritism, because mm -hmm. spiritism is in every culture. Uh, but as I was saying, if, when they would do the work, the spirit, the ancestors, the spirit guides, they would do it in the temple setting, okay? But whenever they needed to do like a, let's say a spiritual wedding, they would go to the forest, they would go to the ocean if they needed to cleanse in the ocean. Uh, we do these ceremonies uh, in nature, mm -hmm. you know, and I still do that now. And here in Massachusetts, people, they watch us and some people take pictures, but I've never been disrespected. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, I do it out in the open. You, I'm sure you see my pictures in, in Facebook uh, because I believe in what I believe in and a lot of people are really, you wouldn't believe, are very, I mean, yes, you have a lot of people that will hate, but then you have a lot of the people that really do respect and they'll see you doing what you're doing and they'll just walk quietly and mind their business. Right. See, a lot of people will, you know, it, it also depends on what area you live in. If you try to do that in a certain state, you know, in a Bible Belt country, they're going to be like, you know, trying to, you know, <laughs> upset. Exactly. So it, it's very, it's very, uh, I think that it should be more open-minded and, um, you know, like teaching. You know, I know that I have a lot of people on my channel that, you know, are not pagans or witches or, you know, brujos. And they, they come and they're very religious, you know, and they, they still watch. And then they'll make their little comments, their trolling comments, but they're still watching every video. So I feel like secretly... It intrigues them. It intrigues them. They're it, learning. It, that's what I've noticed, that, it, that what we do kind of intrigues them. And it does tap into something that they're scared of, that they believe in, but they don't want to accept that. Right. Does that make sense to you? So then they have to throw that negative comment. Because uh, I have also my trolls, the same person that disrespects everything I do. But I noticed... Well, if if, you, if I don't like what you're saying, okay, if I don't like what you're saying, I'm going to walk away from you. If I don't like what you're selling at me on TV, I'm going to change the channel. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay attention. Right. Why is this person paying attention? Well, maybe they like to troll, but they, there's something that I'm saying that taps into them. Right. Does that I make think sense? it's talking it really to does their tap spirit. Into them and, and so they, 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 they have to come back and watch. It's talking to their spirit, like deep down inside, they know some, some of what you're saying is truth. That's why they're attracted to it. Exactly. So they keep coming back because it's feeding their spirit, when religion can't. Yeah, they don't know it. They don't realize it, but it's feeding some curiosity in them. Right. It's answering questions that they couldn't get answered elsewhere. So I feel like yeah, they exactly. might. I knew a lot of um, I knew a lot of men who were homosexuals, but they hated that part of them. Do you see what I'm saying? So they mm -hmm. would get married with women, but secretly they would find men. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They would go in the secret corners of gay clubs far away where no one would see them, mm -hmm. you know, under a different alias, you know. That's what happened in Florida, in Orlando, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and so they go to these different places because there's something that they connect with, you know what I'm saying? And right. it's the same thing with trolls. And I feel like, not pity, I feel bad because there's something that I'm saying that's tapping into you that you keep coming back. Right. I feel like they're, because uh, uh, I've had some trolls, you know, start off religious, very religious, and then as they watched the channel, um, they started, you know, learning more and more, and eventually they had almost switched, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm done with religion now, teach me more, you know. But they they started off as trolls, and now they're you know doing magic. <laughs> exactly. So I know that they're there for a reason, and that's why I don't block them because I feel like even though you're rude and trolling, you're still here every video, so you're learning. <laughs> exactly. 
no, I don't block them either. I let them say what they have to say, and I ignore it. You know, mm -hmm. I try to uh, answer. I mean, they do say nasty things, but I, you know, that doesn't affect me. Right. You know, I've been raised my whole life with people who I thought I, you know, cared for. You know, call me bad names. So if I uh, created a tough shell with this. You think someone who I don't know personally and is disrespecting me, that's going to offend me? It would offend me if I felt it was true. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. But since I don't feel it's true, then I just, okay, well, that's your opinion and I walk away. Okay. Yeah, that's true. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do you believe in the traditional biblical heaven and hell? I believe in a heaven and a hell, but not in the biblical sense. I believe heaven to be a place where when you elevate your spirit, you get into this place, it's kind of heavenly. Your spirit will never need to come back to the material world to suffer. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, and this takes many lifetimes. I believe in a personal hell, and the first layers, we know it because there's purgatory, there's limbo, where we see the ghosts. Those are personal hells, and we have personal hells in life. Uh, we have people who suffer depression, who, su who live in poverty-stricken countries. That's a, that's a, a material hell that they live through. You see what I'm saying? So do you and think that so going there in is... In that sense, I do believe in that. Okay, I like that. I like that explanation. So do you believe in... You believe that um, getting to heaven or hell is um, more, uh, more about knowledge and spiritual growth or more about being good or being bad? Being spiritual, uh, being learning and being spiritually good, not just to yourself, to everybody around you, and to respecting everyone around you and to the earth uh, around you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they, they, they want to talk about, you know, oh, you're going to go to hell, uh, blah, blah, blah. But then if you read the life of Jesus, which to me was one of the greatest mediums that ever walked the earth, he never talked about homosexuality. He sat with prostitutes. He sat with the tax, uh, the tax collectors. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, he taught, he was not sin cast the first stone. So in my tradition, we view him as a great a medium, a teacher that we live, because all he taught was love. Right. Uh, the only thing the man taught was love, you know, self-love and, and respecting everyone around you. Right. Um, so in that sense, if the man existed or not, we, we, we don't, I don't argue if he existed or not. What I, I argue about is the lessons what he taught. We all have something to learn from that lesson. That's which true. is to respecting everyone around you, the earth around you, everyone religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs. The Bible, it says, uh, one, of the, one of the prophets asked Jesus, what about the other, you come to preach to us, what about the other people in the world that don't have, and Jesus said to them, him, uh, God will send unto each nation their teacher. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that teacher can be the Buddha, that teacher can be the, uh, Ganesh, that teacher can be Krishna. You right. feel what I mean? So what do you think when Christians say, oh, Jesus is the only way, if you don't accept him, you're going to hell? Like, do you think that's I, just pure I ignorance? Don't, I don't believe in that. <laughs> I don't believe that you're going to go. You can, you don't, most people who don't believe, a lot of people who, who never even heard the name Jesus and who live a, a peaceful life in a, within a tribe, within a culture, they, heaven means to elevate your spirit, to become enlightened, okay? Mm -hmm. So, They've never even heard the name Jesus. Jesus never existed to them. That doctor didn't, didn't exist to them. So when they pass away in life, their spirit becomes elevated. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. And um, I do believe Jesus was an alchemist, a medium. If he, you know, a lot of people argue if he existed or not, but that's not really the, that's not really exactly. a big issue. But what he did was they said, oh, well, that's miracles. That's not alchemy. That's not magic. Those are miracles. Okay, so I I say, okay, well, you know, he did defend prostitutes. He did, um, you know, hang around the sinners and things like that. So, you know, and he says, the father and I are not separate. So what does that tell you? You know, um, and then, you know, even the Bible says, ye are gods. So when we, um, when we say, oh, Jesus is the only way and you're not, this and you're not that but the bible even they they pick and choose what they want out of the bible 
that makes right, exactly. you know for their agenda. But I feel like if they real if Christians really read the Bible, they would um, and understood it. Um, they would not be so judgmental. Do you know what I mean? Well, no. I mean, even if you if you read the book of, of the witches of Endor in the Bible, a lot of Christians will say, no, the witch was influenced by Satan. Okay? But if you read that passage in the Bible, the witch of Endor, this man, I think his name was Saul, and forgive me if I'm saying the wrong name, he persecuted witches and mediums his whole life. The last person to feed him and to give him a bed was a witch, a medium. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so he, what he killed, what he destroyed throughout his life was the last person to give him a bed and something to eat. Right. You see what I'm saying? Um, so when I read the Bible, and I, most of it is folklore. Most of, most of it is mythologies best, uh, based on other uh, traditions, Mesopotamia, I mean, other traditions. Uh, the story of Noah, it's, it's ancient, more ancient than the Judeo you know, tradition. Okay. I view it as mythologies, stories like any other religions, uh, you know, just their way of explaining something that they couldn't understand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, and I view it as that, but I view King Solomon as a great necromancer. When I read the stories of Moses, there's, you can't tell me he was not the greatest wizard. And every wizard that we, when we picture a wizard, that's we're picturing Moses. You right. know what I'm saying? The long and beard, the robe, yep. <laughs> the robe and the, and the staff that he would throw on the ground and would turn into a serpent, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He had his he had his rod, which was his wand, and his staff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and it says in the Bible, if you look, read a lot of the passages, a lot of the instruments that witches use, a, a lot of the Catholics use. If you go to a Catholic temple, they if you look at their altar, it looks pretty similar to a, a witch's altar. It does. They have the same implements. If you look at uh, the monstrance, the monstrance is a symbol of the sun god, and inside the monstrance, there's the moon, the crescent moon. That represents the male energy and the female energy. Yeah. I went so to as a, a witch, I think, as a witch, I think we, we need to stop saying the burning times, the burning times. And not for the burning times, because the, uh, many of the witches who died in burning times actually did magic in the name of Jesus and, and God and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And some of them did also with their pagan spirits. I think as a society, we need to stop uh, with this whole religion, because religion is man-created, mm -hmm. you know? It was a way that people created to congregate together, to be around like-minded people. And that's okay. That's fine. But when you... Uh, start cr creating a, a group and try to destroy another group that's where I'm not okay with right I agree like um, I went to a Catholic bookstore the other day and I found so much good stuff <laughs> I'm like okay um, yes. I, I grew up Catholic too and um, yeah I got you know I had my communion and all that kind of good stuff but my mom kind of, uh, we moved and got away from the church, but um, I did grow up Catholic, so she went to Catholic school, you know, the nuns were her teacher, so she was super Catholic, right? She had a, a lot of guilt connected with her through religion, and I, I feel like all that guilt that is, um, you know, put on people through religion stops them from getting to their highest potential in life. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yes, it does. It creates zombies, mm -hmm. mindless zombies in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the world. And it, it's not just, if you look at um, a, a lot of witches, oh, you can't do it that way. This is the way you do it. Well, maybe in your culture, in, in, in ancient Celtics, you guys did that way, that way. But if you go to Africa, they did it totally different. If you go to Native Americans, they did it totally different. And, you know, so if you notice a lot of witches, even on YouTube, they're like, oh, no, you can't do it that way. Every witch's magic is their own. It's right. something that I believe in. You right. know what I'm saying? Every Pirikita's belief is their own. Uh, maybe you might not agree with them, but respect what they believe. As long as they're not harming nobody, uh, they're not harming their neighbors, causing discomfort, let each person believe what they believe in. Right. I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like that's true. And... You know, um, a lot of people will ask about, well, I thought this spell, if you did this, then it does the opposite of what you're trying to say. But it's all about it's all about the intention, you know, what you're doing it for, what's on that petition and all that kind of good stuff. You know, it's every right. spell has similar 
um, every spell has similar um, you know steps but it's about your intention and the ingredients and what's on that petition that really matters you know exactly so a lot of newbie um, you know practitioners don't get the understanding of how spells really work so they're just following a recipe rather than their own intuition and how they're feeling you know what I mean and also you have the book you, you have to fall down to learn you have right. to fall you have to fall on ice to learn to say okay I'm not gonna run on ice there are certain basic laws in magic as there is in spirituality as there is in science you're not gonna put a wet fork in a socket you see what I'm saying right. you're just not gonna do that but how do you learn those things by someone else's trial you know trial and tribulations <laughs> or, or, or experiencing that so yeah there are some basic knowledge in every spirituality but a lot of the things that we do, it's trial and error. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, that's how science, the world was created by trial and error. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. Um, so on some of your videos, I see that you have like all these elaborate altars all around. Is that, um, what, okay, what is your most used altar or do you use them all? Oh, I use uh, two, not really use, uh, there's one which is where I honor my spirit, I keep my spirit guides and then my, my I want to. I don't want to use the, uh, my elevated spirits, I keep them separate, there's, you know, uh, but believe it or not, the altar I use the most and is my kitchen table, <laughs> uh, that's where I do everything, we don't even eat on the kitchen table because it's so full of everything. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So 99% of what I'm doing, I'm doing it on my kitchen table. I'm, I'm recording a YouTube video. I'm <laughs> making a herbal bath and blah, blah, blah. My altars, that's where I light the candles and I keep them clean and I light incense and I do my prayers. I do, uh, you know, I, that's where I go there. That's my sacred space. That's your working table. <laughs> but, yeah, but my working table is my kitchen table. That's mm -hmm. my, I call it my altar, my working altar because that's, you know, where I do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite videos that you did was when you made, because I think I, I, I kind of copied you, when you made that um, that bath, <laughs> that herbal bath uh -huh. in your cauldron. Right. Uh, I was like, oh, I want to do that. You know, it like your videos are very inspiring. They, they give you motivation to get up and do something like, you know, some people, you know, slack on their spirituality or they're just lazy. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'll just buy it. But you actually inspire lots of, uh, you know, practitioners to get up and make their own stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I come from a culture where my grandmother, she didn't get, she didn't go to the botanica to buy sawdust. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's what they sell a lot. Uh, she would go into nature and get what she needed. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The earth gives you everything. You just have to have the eye to look for it. Um, you know, she needed holy water. They sell holy water online. If she needed, she needed holy water, she would leave a donation at the church and get holy water. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's how I learned it. Um, I come from a culture, a Puerto Rican culture, where they didn't... Today, you can go to the market and you can get Goya sofrito. You know, the sofrito is a Puerto Rican condiment. I grew up at a time where the women made that by hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They didn't go to the market to get that. So I, to me, when you do something from your hand, with, from your hand, you're giving it your energy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you, and, and that's where most of the power comes from. Right. And I made that. Um, I made that bath that you had made um, with you know fresh herbs and things like that. And when I, you know, when I used it, it, it the energy was much more cleansing. Uh, my energy was in it. You know, I, I feel like exactly. it's more powerful. And you know, exactly. I'm, gl I'm glad you're bringing that, you know, to the YouTube community because now it's just like, oh, go buy this and go buy that and you can use this. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you're taking it to a place that's very inspirational. Like you, you make people get up and say okay I need to go and buy this this and that I need to go do this you know you get them more you get them excited to practice you know and that's why I like your channel you you get like when I'm when I'm kind of burnt out I'll just go to your channel and I'm like okay let me get inspired <laughs> thank you thank you so yeah. But, you know, yeah like I said I like to I like to get um down and dirty when I do stuff and yeah I, I do buy products don't get me wrong I love my Florida water <laughs> it's easier to go buy Florida water than to make it yeah there are those old products that that the grandmothers use you know most of those products 
products were based on magical elixirs, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, king pine, you know, what we use for the floor, pine saw, that, you know, pine in itself is a very protective herb. It removes and banishes negative vibrations. So when you're mopping with king pine, it's got pine, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't even know it, that this is an ancient elixir that just became marketed. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, like, why would so it be pine? Like, you why can could find they... magical ingredients in nature just as much as you can find it in a botanica as you can find it in your local supermarket. Right. I think that would be a good video. You know, stuff, uh, supermarket witchery, which you can get, uh, you know, nature, uh, you know, and kind of do a three-part series, like, you know, mm -hmm. things that you already oh, have. Yeah. That would be good. I mean, a supermarket's got all the herbs. It's got a lot of it, those cleaning products. Ammonia. I mean, we use ammonia for, for removing the evil eye. A couple of drops in your bath. Uh, you know, there's a lot of products. Um, I think I just did one on borax. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Jewelry cleaner. I, I, I saw that. <laughs> Yeah, that's in the supermarket, two, three dollars for that big box. I mean, a lot of people are paying ten dollars for this little bottle of a, an ounce of something. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. But borax is a natural component, and a lot of people have used it in spiritual work. Right, and I saw you used it to clean your uh, jewelry too. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, I, that's what I like. Like you can use stuff. It doesn't have to be bought from like a magical store or online, and you know. Right. And the, and you just inspire people, and you know, I'm I'm just saying that because I feel like a lot of us need to be inspired to actually do things with passion. Right. I would rather not do something if I don't have the passion or inspiration, and you know, just to be doing something. So that's why I like your channel because you know you give me that inspiration. You know how some people when they when they work out, they need music or they need, um, exactly. you know, that's that's what your channel is to a lot of people, I feel. Thank you. Thank okay. <laughs> I try. I try. I try, you know, uh, to be unique and not so much unique. I try to bring people back to the way it was mm -hmm. or the way I saw it when I was uh, younger. Uh, I don't want our my tradition, my family's tradition to die out. You know, so I'm trying tooth and nail to keep it afloat. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I know there are still these old viejitas, these old grandmothers who still use these old products, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, a lot of people, they can use, I call it microwave, microwave witchcraft. Mm -hmm. They get the, the sawdust, the botanica, and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that works too if you, it doesn't work as, as much as powerful, but it works if you have that faith and, and, you, and you give it the prayer and you energize it yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you when you pick that herb, when you add that, you know, when you scrape that piece of wood and you're giving it more your, your energy, your chair, your, your, your sweat. Right. I, that's what I feel like. I feel like a lot of new witches, they're just putting the ingredients in a bowl and stirring it up and saying, okay, that's it. But that energy and that intention and the thoughts that you're thinking when you're creating or uh, uh, making the, uh, you know, or grinding the herbs and making the sawdust, like you say, that's going into that. And that's what's making it more powerful. You know, it's almost it's almost like magnetizing um, something, you know, if you just, you know, put something in a bowl um, versus, you know, something that you've magnetized. One has more energy. One is going to attract things. One is just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like that's, the, if you don't energize and put intention into your ingredients, uh, whether they're store-bought or, you know, whatever, you, you know, however you make them, they're not going to help you much. Exactly. I mean, I love to go to like here in Salem, Massachusetts, there's a lot of witch, witch stores, um, and I just, I, I go to look. There's one store that I go, it's called Artemis Botanicals, because there's some herbs that I need that I can't find nowhere. Mm -hmm. But one time, I was there, and when, this is kind of funny, uh, I was there, and here we are in Massachusetts, there's 500 species of pine all over the place, okay? So this person comes in and asks the clerk, does she sell the pine cones? And I just had to look at this lady like, are you dumb? Because we're in Massachusetts, there's pines everywhere, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go all to nature and pick it up. Leave a few coins and, 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 and use it, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then there are those products that you can't get that you need, you know what I'm saying? Those tropical herbs that I was raised in, 
Malagueta, you know, Puerto Rican Malagueta, you know, I like it. I like how it makes me feel. It reminds me of my grandmother. So I ship that plant from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I get a ship from Puerto Rico. Herbs that I can't get here, I get a ship from the Caribbean or Florida. Mm -hmm. Or I go to, if I just need a, a little bit, I go to uh, Artemis Botanicals and Salem and, and I, I, I get an ounce or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like, you know, I guess they can't really grow where you live. Exactly, it's like dragon blood. I love the smell of dragon blood. That's not growing in my backyard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I have to go to Salem, and, and, and it's expensive, the resin, but I, I get a, an ounce of that resin because I like it. I like how it smells, and I like how it's, when you mix it with other uh, resins, but it throws off. Yeah. You know, so those, those, those ingredients that yeah, you, you, you can buy in a store, but it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to go to a pagan shop. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many ethnic shops, uh, shops with um, asafiria, asafiria, they sell it in Hindu, Indian shops, and it's like $2. And then if you go to a, a pagan shop, it's like $10, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and you wouldn't believe how many products I go to, like an Indian shop, a Mexican shop, uh, and I find a lot of my, uh, the products that I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we we have uh, Hispanic grocery stores down here, and you can get the same thing for like one dollar, and they would charge you ten dollars for somewhere else. So exactly, I, I mean in Salem they charge like ten dollars for a candle, seven day candle, uh, ten dollars, and like nine dollars for photo water. And if you just cross the bridge to the Hispanic side, you know you're gonna get that same candle for two dollars and Florida water for three. You know? Right. Right, exactly. And that's why I, I shop at Hispanic grocery stores when I need some of my products because they're like ridiculously overpriced somewhere else. But I feel like also, you know, if, I want to ask you a question. What tool, what magical tool or magical item um, is your favorite to use? I, oh my goodness. I <laughs> use the bell a lot. I use the ultra bell a lot. Um, when I salute the morning, I have a, a glass of water. So I have this cup. Uh, it's a it's, um, stainless steel uh, water pitcher. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot, and I use my bell a lot. I use a walking stick a lot. A lot of people don't see it in my videos. Everywhere I go, I mean, a lot of people ask me, are you okay? Is your leg okay? Because I'm <laughs> still young, but I like to walk with my walking stick. So that's something that goes with me every time I go to, you know, walking somewhere into nature. Uh, it protects me from the elements, it helps me to balance myself, uh, and I do view it as a sacred item that I always use. I always use my jewelry, I love my jewelry, I like my silver, I like my silver and my stainless steel, mm -hmm. that's something that I use a lot. Uh, but mostly the bell, uh, daily, when I wake up, I open the door and I pour water on the ground, I thank the spirits for a, a, another day, another life. Uh, I pour water onto the earth, I light my incense, I, 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 I pray, I ring my bell every day, every day, every day, every day without failure. You know, it take, it's just like washing my mouth, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is something that I do without even thinking, it's just instant. Okay, well that is the first time I ever heard someone say their bell was their favorite. And I think uh, that's yes. cool. I just my bought bell, a bell. I, I always ring my bell every morning. <laughs> that's how I, I usher in the day. I call in the day. I, I salute my spirit. I get their attention. Mm -hmm. I'm ringing this bell to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, some people use a, what, a singing bowl, a bell, you know, exactly. a drum. Yes. So I, um, I just bought a bell two days ago, which is strange. <laughs> um, because I have a singing bowl that I use but I just had to buy this bell for some reason it's I got it thrifted right. yeah it's like an antique bell it's made out of glass and it's just like one of those old school like glass antique bells and I was like this is something I need I don't know it just called out to me you know how sometimes when you're thrifting and you see something and it's like that's supposed to be mine <laughs> it's funny I think I have I, I, I would swear to God I would have I think I have like 11, 12 bells in my house, um, <laughs> and each place has its bell. And when I pass by, I even have a, you know the hotel bells? Mm -hmm. uh, there's an altar going towards the bathroom to St. Michael, and every time anyone passes by that altar, they, they, they ding it, you know? 
I'm saying? <laughs> uh, it's a sign of respect. Mm -hmm. I never, you know, I never and, thought about doing a, a bell like on my altar, you know, because I do the spray. I'll spray my altar and like, you know, the saints that I'm working with. But I never thought about the bell. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll start incorporating it's a, it's something a way like that. to get the attention of the positive spirit and to warn the not so positive spirits. You see what I'm saying? I see. Uh, many negative spirits cannot. They they don't like the vibrational sound that it, that, it, that, it, that it throws out into the universe. Mm -hmm. And when I say lower level spirits, I uh, I mean spirits that that are mocking. That that that. Yeah. That bring depression, that bring, you know, sadness into your life. So by ringing that, it, 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 it calls to your good spirits, but it also, the vibration kind of pushes the negative spirits away. I, I, I really believe that, like, because even scientifically, you know, when you put a ripple in the water, you know, mm -hmm. um, like a vibration, it's going to rock a boat that's on it, uh, you know, kind of disturb what's on it that shouldn't be there. But, um, exactly. you know, if you there's nothing in the water, then right. you, when the ripple gets to the other side, you know, someone else is seeing it and recognizing and noticing that you're there, you know? Exactly. So I, I understand, and I, I'm going to start incorporating that in my, you know, daily... And the bell, it, it symbolizes both masculine and the feminine. You know, the, fe the, 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 the cosmic energies of... Uh, I mean, the holder is a phallic symbol. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? And then... The bell itself is the female womb, so it represents giving life, giving acknowledgement uh, to the spiritual world, to the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And what's the little thing inside? Is that the child? Uh, that, <laughs> that is the sperm to give, uh, that sounds nasty, but that is the sperm that gives life, you know okay. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. uh, sexual um, interaction, because a lot of it is, is based on sexual interaction. Mm -hmm. Even though we try to hide it, it, it really is. Sexual energy is the most powerful energy that humans have. One of the most powerful sh emotions that we, we give out as a human being. Mm -hmm. um, so by ringing that bell, you in a way, I, a lot of people are not going to like this, but in a way you are uh, honoring that energy of the feminine and the masculine and the creation okay, of so that and calling well, forth that. Would the ring be the child or the climax? <laughs> I said, would the ring of the bell, would that be the child, or would that be a climax? That could be the climax, yeah, the climax, because remember, the climax is a pleasure, it's an emotion, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a, it's a joyful emotion, and when you feel joy within your heart, everything around you becomes joy. Right, because, you know, that's that's another form of magic, you know, of the, when you do sex magic. Um, it's the same thing, you know, when you have the release, that's your vibration going out into the universe and you can well, manifest Well, well you're, you're actually in life at that moment. You're passing through life and death at that moment. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you are actually present. More than anything, any act in the world, at that moment you are present. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's magical. And right. That's something that we should strive to feel every moment of the day. Right, because you're not in the past or the future. You're in the moment. Exactly. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> so, well, we've been on here for a long time. And I yeah. think I've gotten all I can get out of you today. And you probably need some more coffee after this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. But thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I had a, a lot of fun. Me too. Do you want to say goodbye to everyone? I'm sorry? Do you want to say goodbye or anything to everyone? Yeah, I just want to say uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the channel, I mean the show. Uh, hopefully we'll do more in the future. And thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks anytime. <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. Okay, well, I will talk to you later on. And you have a good rest of the day. And again, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.